I'm Kevin Clawson, and I'm speaking to you about uh, the Bonson Project and about Greg Bonson. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm the former vice president of academics at Bryan College in Dayton, Tennessee. And uh, before that, uh, I served as president of Christ College, which I'll have a little bit more to say about in a minute, uh, in Lynchburg, Virginia, and uh, also as the head of the government programs at Liberty University for a number of years in Lynchburg, Virginia. I first met Greg in 1987. I was invited to a conference at Geneva College on the role of civil government, the biblical role of civil government. Uh, I was supposed to represent the Christian America position, which I really had never heard of before, <laughs> actually but they wanted me to represent that position. Greg was representing the theonomic position. Um, so I went and uh, I spoke and he spoke and a bunch of other people spoke as well. It turns out that his presentation and my presentation dovetailed very well. And uh, the, the follow-up conference they had, they, they just did away with the uh, Christian America position and collapsed it into just two positions uh, that were that would be presented or defended at that point. So I, I I didn't go back then, but by that time I'd become quite well acquainted with Greg, and and uh, we asked him to join us. There were a group of us uh, in uh, starting up a new college called Christ College. Now we had already done a lot of work on Christ College, and we knew about Greg. Uh, we knew about his work on apologetics primarily because one of the fellows that was involved with that had gone to Reform Theological Seminary and had Greg for apologetics. So he had given me all Greg's notes, and I had looked through them, written, handwritten notes, which I still have someplace in a box, and uh, from his class on apologetics. And it was just eye opening. It was it was eye opening. Then I heard him present his paper on civil government at the conference at Geneva. And being a political scientist and, and uh, having a law degree and so forth and teaching government, I, I was just mesmerized by all of this, this uh, uh, somewhat new stuff. Although I'd, I'd been introduced a little bit to it uh, when I was at Grove City College, uh, teaching at Grove City College. By that time, I'd left Grove City College and moved on to Liberty University. But um, so he was he was very much involved with us in in the startup and the uh, continuance of Christ College in Lynchburg, Virginia, and also in Greenville, South Carolina. He visited a lot in Lynchburg, and uh, we hosted him in Lynchburg and went out to dinner and sometimes had him over to our house for dinner and he grilled my daughter at that time. She would have been about, I guess, six or seven uh, on logic and uh, the catechism and so on and so forth. <laughs> she was fascinated by that. Uh, uh, she still remembers that to this day. She's, she's in her thirties and married and seven children and so forth. So she, she was impacted by Greg too at a very young age. Uh, but we continued with Christ College for some time. Greg visited and taught all kinds of courses at Christ College, most of which were recorded. And, uh, and I mean, not just government, but philosophy and, and apologetics and theology and, and so on and so on. Uh, while he was there one time in Lynchburg, Virginia, I invited him to speak at Liberty University, which was quite a coup. He was able to speak there for a whole week. He, he gave 10 lectures over the course of a whole week at Liberty University on every subject imaginable. Christian view of government, Christian view of business, Christian view of law, uh, apologetics. He, he spoke to the apologetics class there, but Gary Habermas's apologetics class. Gary is a, is a, a famous evidentialist and uh, but he was very kind, very gracious to allow Greg to come in and speak to his class. And then he had him over to his house and uh, just had a chat with his students about apologetics and so on. 
And that, that was a, a, a real eye-opener for some of the Liberty University students who came to hear him uh, in some larger venues there at Liberty back in, I believe that was 1990. Um, it wasn't well received by a few people, but uh, there were a lot of people that received it very, very well and were influenced by it. And of course, he spoke at the church there in Lynchburg, uh, Dick Canodal's church, Grace Orthodox Presbyterian Church, when he visited as well. We just got to know each other really well. And he was a, a tremendous asset to Christ College, to the Reformed community there uh, in, uh, in Lynchburg, Virginia, when he, when he came, when he visited. Uh, and then he was, of course, a tremendous impact through his writings. Uh, I, I got my hands on everything I could that he wrote. Uh, I'm more of a reader than a listener or, or anything like that. I like a real book in my hands. And so I, I got my hands on what I could get my hands on, papers and books and so forth that Greg had written, particularly on government. And uh, really, that's my, my passion. And, and that's where he really hit home with me on his, his biblical view of government. And he surprised people. I remember this. He surprised people. They thought he was going to come in there like some Iranian Ayatollah. And uh, he didn't. Uh, his view of government was limited government, limited constitutional government, not a government that was going to tell you to do everything, tell you everything to do and direct your lives and so on and so forth. It was, it was nothing even close to totalitarianism. Some people even interpreted him as being closer to being libertarian than anything else, uh, which he wasn't either, but, you know, labels. People wanted labels. Uh, so it was really fun. It was it was exciting getting to know Greg, and then he was involved, as I say, with Christ College and the Patrick Henry Institute, was a which was a related organization to Christ College. He, he even gave good advice on the acquisition of property in Virginia, in Lynchburg, when we were starting up all these things. Uh, we were offered an old building, a magnificent old building. You can probably see the picture over my shoulder here, if you squint. Um, we were, we were given the building, and, but Greg was very, uh, 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 very wise in asking a lot of questions. You know, well, how is this, how much does it keep, take to keep it up? Are there going to be some major repairs involved and so on and so forth? Uh, we did go ahead and get it, and we kept it until 2008 when we sold it, uh, by which time Greg had gone to be with the Lord, of course, but he came to that, that uh, old building uh, a little bit, and uh, uh, that was quite an eye-opener as well. So uh, what I would encourage people to do is really get on board with the Bonson Project. The things that Greg said, the things that he said, he lectured on, he wrote about, he recorded. There's, a, I mean, this is where we're coming from. That he recorded all kinds of things. In a, in a day and age when recording things wasn't as big a deal, as, as popular as it is now. Um, I would encourage people to take advantage of all those materials, to contribute to the cause, to disseminate all this information that has been a little bit dormant for a number of years, although a few of us still use it, still read it, and still refer to it. Uh, but get out there, spread the word, uh, send money, and use it. <laughs> <laughs>